Hi everybody! I wanted to do a little extra intro this week because YouTube's up to some silliness again. You no longer can just subscribe to a channel and expect to see all their videos. You now also will see that right next to the subscription button, once you're subscribed, there's a little bell. And what you'll have to do is you'll have to ring that bell. So from now on, don't just like and subscribe videos to get notifications from them. You have to also ring the bell, then find the dead drop under the park bench, uh, email YouTube support with use the, the code, code you find in open there, the geocache and get key to find the open bank, bank vault use in, the uh, code on the break padlock, into a safe check the letter that you find the under the door Call your for local representative to ask for Say, notifications. Say, I am subscribed three times in the bathroom mirror. And remember to do all of that and you'll get all of the videos from your favorite subs. Thank you very much, everybody. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Deck Tech. And this week, I get to go back to one of my all-time favorites. I didn't do it on YouTube, really, either. I did, like, a brew right at the start of Dusk Road. I think it was the first video I did. Um, and it was Grenadin Sacrifice. But it wasn't really the ramp deck. And then on uh, Twitch, I was just all over this deck. This deck was so cool. And I'm bringing it back because... It was a lot of fun. It brought me to Masters in January, I believe. Um, and it's just a sweet, sweet list. It's really, really cool because it kind of operates like an aggro deck that all can just shift right into a control deck. Like, it has both sides to it. It's got, like, this way to shift gears. And I've really, really enjoyed that. So this is still head all Dizo. We have... Uh, Obviously, the wonderful new promo that I really wanted to brew around. I didn't put four in because I don't think it's that good, but I want to test it out, and I, I'd really like to try it, and I'm doing it in this ramp it in control shell because it makes a lot of sense. This deck is all about sacrificing your own things. So if you haven't seen this deck before, it's really, really light on removal. It's pretty weak to flyers, but what it does is super, super grindy and very powerful. What you want to do is get a bunch of Grenadins through Grenadin Drone, Spark Hatcher, and Assembly Line, and then you can sacrifice them. You can either use them to attack. This is the kind of aggro versus the control side of it. Sometimes you get a hand where you go Grenadin Drone, and then next turn, Spark Hatcher, and then turn three, Assembly Line, and you just keep hitting your opponent, and you just knock them out that way. Sometimes, though, and most of the time, I would say, what you're trying to do is say, like, Grenadin Drone, and then you want to get Combustion Cell down. So Combustion Cell is when you once a turn, you can sacrifice a Grenadin, or any unit rather, to get plus one power. And if it's a Grenadin, then you get plus two. Which is why, I mean, sacrificing Grenadin kind of important for our deck. Although we do sacrifice other things sometimes. I'll get to that in a minute. And you're going to use that to both power up really high level plays early. So get like turn three scrap tank and stuff like that. But also so that you can get uh, Gear Cruncher all the way to maximum. Gear Cruncher is absolutely bonkers, by the way. Um, and if you can fill your void with a bunch of Grenadins, then you can use Gear Cruncher to get all of them back, essentially. So when it comes into play, then you get a 1-1 Grenadin for each Grenadin that's already in your void. When you have Grenadin Drones, Spark Hatchers, and Assembly Lines being sacrificed every turn, it's very, very easy to get that up to like 10 and just make an entire board out of one creature. And that's really, really powerful. Uh, then you have a bunch of other things that go along with that. One of the things, like I said, with Combustion Cell, uh, where we sometimes sacrifice other things, is Madness. Madness is basically our only real removal spell. We have a couple of Vara's Favors for other aggro decks, but... Eh, for the most part, we're not too worried about that. We can chump for a really long time and, like, Oni Ronins and things like that, uh, Crown Watch Paladins, a, a lot of those kinds of cards where you just kind of block with a drone, trade it. We have a lot of different ways to make 1-1s. But we have the Madness and Combust, sacrifice a unit to kill a unit. So those are kind of our two removal spells, and they go hand in hand. The best thing to do is to Madness, steal a unit, Combust their own unit, to kill one of the other units that they have. A really, really sweet little combo. But it's nice to have extra sacrifice outlets like combustion cells. So if you don't have a combust with you, you can still madness, steal their best creature, and then just sacrifice it to combustion cell instead. You also have devour to sacrifice their units. 
and also to get your own online. A lot of the times you're going to use this on your own creatures. You'll Granite and Drone turn to Devour a lot. Like, that's a, a very common play in this deck. And then you have Quarry as well. So you kind of have your card draw suite with Devour and Quarry, where you're just going to try and dig down so that you can try and get to your Gear Crunchers. The other thing that works with your draw suite is Stone Scar Scrapper, which is another really big piece of the deck. You can use Direwood Prowler in... Uh, in place of this, but I came around. I used to think that I liked Direwood Prowler more because Direwood Prowler, you sacrifice one thing and you draw two cards and it's on play, so you do it right away. But Stone... And it's uh, a 5-5 five, five instead of a 4-6. Stone Scar Scrapper, though, um, whenever the Grenadines die, you gain one and you had to pay it to sacrifice two units, so not one, to draw two cards. The big problem that I always had with it was that you might not have two units, but more and more I've realized that eh, this deck has enough units. I, I do like the Scrapper. The life gain is really important, even if sometimes you can't sacrifice, just gaining life can be really, really good. And being repeatable is good, because uh, the Direwood Prowler is only on a come into play trigger, so better to do it this way, I think. And then you also have, of course, kind of your finishers, which are your Scrap Tank, your Gear Cruncher, there is a one of Caleb. This deck used to run two, but I'm, I'm cutting some of them for Dizo. Um, that and there was also an Oblivion Spike, which are just kind of one turn kill type cards. So you'll Gear Cruncher and then Caleb. So you'll have like a full board and then immediately Caleb and suddenly you're dealing 50, 60 damage and it just absolutely wrecks people. So that's a thing that you can do. Uh, instead, we're using Dizo for it. Uh, Scrap Heap is another one that we kept because it gives all your Grenade in charge, which is really good at the Gear Cruncher. I still decided that I wanted to keep that. This might be better as a Caleb instead. Uh, Dizo, though, is our last guard, which is kind of our, our fun little promo that we added. And what Dizo does is it's an unblockable 4-6, and we get to sacrifice another unit to create and draw Cabal Extortion Scheme, which is a three-cost spell where the enemy player has to choose that they either... We either draw the top three cards of their deck, which is kind of interesting, or it deals them seven damage and we gain seven life. Probably not as good as I want it to be, but it seems like a ton of fun and I had to check it out. So we're going to play with some Dizo, we're going to try out these Grenadines, and... Yeah, let's let's see how we do this week.